Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to accomplish three different items. I'm uh, going to be shooting at 100 yards with my 25-06, my Browning BBR, uh, shooting three different 100 grain bullets. I'm also going to respond to some uh, comments by some folks uh, about some of the items that I use to sight in some rifles. So hang on folks, we'll get to shooting. Okay, this is my Browning BBR and 25 odd 6. I've owned it for close to 40 years, taken a lot of game with it. Uh, but today I'm going to make a demonstration for some of you that have had questions, well, not questions, but mainly comments about the use of the Magneto Speed Sporter that I use to gather data for my reloading. Uh, a lot of you said, well, with that bayonet hanging off of there, uh, you can't get very much accuracy. Well, I think that word accuracy is thrown around a little too often. Uh, what it should really mean is, or what I'm really looking for when I reload is precision. Not necessarily accuracy. Accuracy, of course, is point of aim, point of impact, exactly the same where you're aiming and where you're supposedly going to hit. Precision is how that ammunition with this rifle reacts in terms of small groups and consistency of things like standard deviation and extreme spread. That can only be gathered, that those numbers, with a chronograph. Then you can go back, you can fine tune, etc., and then without the chronograph on the barrel or anything else, then you can go ahead and shoot for absolute precision and accuracy together, point of aim, point of impact. So I hope that kind of clears it up. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and prove a point here that, yes, there is a point of impact shift with this on the barrel. Not all the time, but most of the time, because there is a weight on the barrel. Yes, I understand that there can be hundreds of arguments all day long about uh, barrel harmonics and, and how people mollify that by putting on a brake or putting on a flash suppressor or putting on some type of barrel apparatus or, or even a suppressor. Think about that big old heavy thing on there. Uh, but most of us hunters, we have naked barrels when we go out. So we're going to take a look here with uh, three shots of three different bullets. Uh, as you can see right there, I've got some Nosler, I've got some Hornaday 100 grain, and I've got some Sierra 100 grain. Uh, all the powder loads are the same. That'll have just as much a point of impact, point of aim shift as attaching a, uh, a chronograph to the end of my barrel. Uh, so there's a lot of variables out there. Well. Let's get to shooting, and I hope that explains some things, so uh, maybe you won't uh, put that comment on there. Well, your accuracy will improve as soon as you get that thing off the end of your barrel. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, let's go ahead and get to shooting. It'll be the target on the left, shooting the Sierra 100 grain with the bayonet on. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Hey, low left. You see that? Let's see what happens. OK, 
Okay, low left. All right, third and final shot. Okay, extremely low and left. Okay, and that was an average of 31.95 on those three. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take off the. No, I'm do... no, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the nozzlers now. So you see where those three are. Let's see if this makes a different point of impact. Okay, you see where that one landed? Love this gun. You see where that nozzler landed? And you see where that nozzler landed. Now this is all with the bayonet on there. Okay, now how about the three Hornadays? These are the Hornadays. So you you see on the on the target where each three shot. So now let's do it again. This time with the Hornaday. That one went way low. Do you see that? So, point of impact in this particular case has nothing to do with the bayonet. It has to do with the bullet. Or the shooter. Or a combination of everything. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, take the bayonet off now, let the barrel cool down, and uh, let's see if we can get different groupings. Okay, now we're going to shoot uh, the same set of 3, 3, and 3 without the magneto speed in. Uh, watch for the point of impact uh, difference. Uh, I'm not necessarily concerned with that. 
Again, point of impact, point of aim can be adjusted with the scope. I've got the consistency that I'm looking for as far as the ammo is concerned. But now let's just see how each three shoots and see if there's a point of impact difference just because of the bullet. All right, here we go. First up is the Sierra, just like before. Be the target on the right. Okay, that went way low. Did you see that? Still low. Okay, still low, but a pretty good group. Again, that could be changed with the scope. The magneto speed was just to gather the data. The average speed was 32.13 on those. Okay, now for the nozzlers. Let's see if there's a point of impact difference. Looks to be. Now this tells me something right here, probably, for these nozzlers, was the last time I sighted this gun in, was probably for the nozzlers. All right, you've got those three. Now, for the Hornadays. Oh gosh, I even get comments about that, pronouncing that wrong. Hornadees. Ah, heck, I'm from the West. I played football with a couple of Hornaday brothers. They were good guys. Not necessarily related. Okay. Last shot. All right. So you can see that on camera. 
let's get back to the bench and I'll map those out for you and we'll uh, end up this discussion. Okay, back from the range, here's the two targets on your left is with the magneto speed, average was 32.16 on the right. Without the magneto speed, obviously didn't record any data. The basic difference is, is that uh, Sierra did one and a quarter inches, the Nosler did one and a quarter inches, and the Hornaday did one half of an inch. There's the Hornaday, there's the Sierra, there's the Nosler. On the right hand side, Sierra, three quarters of an inch, Nosler one inch, Hornaday three quarters of an inch. And you can see that the, the point of impact uh, was essentially the same. Uh, kind of interesting here though is the Sierra went lower and the Hornaday stayed about the same. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, basically the difference in the groups makes absolutely no difference because the purpose of using the magneto speed is to gather the data. I hope this helped you folks. Uh, I hope it cleared up some uh, misconceptions or some comments that I get on my uh, videos. But if you like this folks uh, and you like this content, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell notification for future videos. But no matter what, thanks for taking the time to watch. God bless you all. See you next time. Goodbye.